But now my assignment is Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, where we are looking at touching heaven, changing earth. Glory to God. We have a powerful God that has given us the ability to be an incredible Christian that can link two realms together, that can touch two realms at the same time. And we do it through prayer. We're talking about the power of prayer. We have talked about, you know, prayer from various angles. Now we're talking about prayer and spiritual warfare. And we are taking the passage from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. That is the passage, you know, the primary passage on spiritual warfare. It's one of the greatest passages uh, of scripture on spiritual warfare. And we looked at, you know, uh, the introduction and I gave you the introduction of what spiritual warfare is. Then we began to look at the, you know, the different pieces of the armor of God. Right? We, talk, we talked about that. And, and so I just want you to understand this. God has given his people some, you know, precious possessions. He has given us, you know, truth. He has given us his word. He has given us his spirit. He has given us his church. He has given us his grace. He has given us salvation. He has given us blessings. And so on and so forth. So there's a whole lot of precious possessions that you and I have even right now. And it's because of that that you can call yourself a multi-millionaire or a billionaire spiritually. Because we have a whole lot of precious possessions. Amen. Everybody say I have some very precious possessions. Amen. I have some very precious possessions. Do you believe that? You are the owner of God's precious possessions. Truth, word, spirit, church, grace, salvation, blessing, healing. I can go on, but, you know, I need to go to the other point. And the devil wants all of it. What a wicked devil he is. He wants to take what God has given us. He wants to take all of it. Listen, he will do anything to take everything which we have been given by the Lord. All right? He will, he will do anything to take everything. Now, if we are to keep what we have received from the Lord, we must stand and hold on. Please listen. We must stand and hold on to the critical position we have received from the Lord. All right? If you and I are to keep what we have received from the Lord, then we must stand and hold on to the critical position, not possession, position of being a child of God. Wearing the breastplate of righteousness on. Having the belt of truth on. We need to hold on to the critical position. Right? That's what you and I are called to do. And when we do so, we can overcome the enemy and keep him out. Now, in order to, you know, stand and hold on to the critical position. To do that, God says, you must put on the old armor of God. You must put on the old armor of God. And this passage that we, that I just said you know, tells us about the pieces which constitute <clears throat> the armor of God. All right? We've already discussed the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. Right? The belt of truth refers, I said, to a life of total commitment to the Lord. That's the belt of truth. It is a life of total commitment to the Lord. It refers to a life that is Built upon the faithfulness, all right? Built upon faithfulness to the word of God and to the God of the word. Let me say that again. The belt of truth refers to a life that is, you know, built upon faithfulness to the word of God and to the God of the word. That's what the belt of truth signifies. It speaks of truth in testimony. And truth in living. Got to write that down somewhere. The belt of truth speaks of truth in testimony. Your testimony. Every one of you has a testimony. And if you look at your testimony. It is you know totally immersed in truth. The only reason you have a testimony. Is because truth has set you free. Come on talk to me somebody. Truth has made its inroads in your life. Therefore you have a testimony. You cannot have a testimony without truth. So it speaks of truth in testimony and it also speaks of truth in living. All right? You must understand that. This belt of truth 
will provide the Christian soldier stability. This belt of truth will provide the Christian soldier stability. It also provides, please listen, it also provides the believer, it also provides the Christian. You know, it also provides a place for the other pieces of armor to rest, to be fixed in. If you did not have the belt of truth, the rest of the armor will not fit in place. So thank God that the belt of truth holds the rest of the armor together. So you see, it is, it is of utmost importance that we hold on to the truth. You and I must be believers of the truth. You and I must be members of the truth before we become members of a church. Because what really matters is not a membership in a church. What really matters is, am I a child of truth? Am I a son of truth? I am, am I a daughter of truth? Because the only thing that the Christian is called to uphold is the truth of God. All else will fail. Everything else will fail one day. But the truth, which is the word of God, will stand forever. Glory to God. Without the belt of truth, the soldier of God, please listen, without the belt of truth, the soldier of God will find the rest of the armor, the other pieces of the armor useless. You see, it will not benefit you if you do not have the belt of truth in place. If you don't understand truth, all the rest of the armor is useless to you. Because you won't know how to use your righteousness. You won't know how to use the gospel shoes. You won't know what to do with the shield of faith. Nothing. The truth enables us to make useful the other pieces of the armor. Secondly, we talked about the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness refers to the power of a holy life. Glory to God. It's the power of a holy life. A holy life. That is a life that is lived according to God's teaching in his word. Is a powerful defense against the attacks of the enemy. Glory to God. You got to understand that. You must understand that. A holy life, that is a life that is lived according to God's teaching in his word. All right? Is a powerful defense against the attacks of the enemy. You must know that. Please listen. When we allow sin to dwell in our lives, we give Satan a foothold from where he can attack us and exploit us. Don't, that's why the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, do not give place to the devil, which means... Do not give a foothold. Because if you give him a foothold, he will come right into your life and devastate you. So, when we allow sin to dwell in our lives, I'm telling you, you're giving Satan a foothold from which he can attack us and exploit us. Write this down, please. Holiness closes the door to the devil. Very, very important statement. Holiness closes the door to the devil. And it helps protect us from his attacks. Holiness closes the door to the devil. And it helps protect us from his attacks. Can you see the importance of holy living? The devil is a spectator as long as you live a holy and righteous life. He cannot take one hair from your head. Not one strand of hair from your head. He can't even touch it. If you are living holy. Look at, the, look at all the saints of God. Both in the old and in the new covenant. And you see the devil could not do much with them. Because they were living a holy life. Amen. Now. Thirdly this morning. I want you to see the feet shod. With the gospel of peace. We're going to look at the third piece of armor today. And that is. The feet shod with the gospel of peace. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6 please. Ephesians 6 and verse 15. And having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, the feet are very important to the body. Your body cannot have mobility without feet, right? 
when, when we compare the feet to the heart where the breastplate protects, we tend to think, well, it's not as important as the heart. But let me tell you, feet are very important to the body. Now, Paul comes to the soldier's shoes in this particular verse. Shoes have, a, shoes have become a major, you know, part of our culture. Every one of us will agree with that. Shoes have become a major part of our culture. Please listen. Originally, shoes were used to protect feet. Now, it has become a fashion item. In those days, the shoes were used. Original purpose of shoes is to protect the feet. But today it has become a fashion item for most of us. Now please listen. For the most part, you know, we are not wandering over rough stone, wading through the mud, you know, tramping in dust, you know, and trying to stroll, stroll across thorny bushes. No, we're not doing all that. We must understand that the terrain that day was terrible. We must understand that the terrain in that day was terrible. You know, the thorns, the thorns were piercing. It, it, you, you know, you got to know, when you don't understand that, you know, you don't understand the value of shoes. See, for us who have, you know, paved roads and, you know, uh, good pavements and, and, you know, carpeted offices and carpeted churches, we don't know much about, you know, the difficult terrain that, that they faced in those days. How piercing the thorns and other items, you know, lying, that were lying on the ground. How hard it was to walk over the cobbles. And the rocks and pebbles and everything else in those parts of the world. We, we don't understand what it means to walk over those, you know, rough, rough terrain. We don't know about it. And that's why we don't appreciate the shoes very much. But let me tell you this. When you understand the importance, then you will understand why the Roman soldier would never get out without, first of all, putting on his shoes. Now, why were the shoes provided to the Roman soldier? The shoes will provide a certain function. Number one, why were the shoes provided to the Roman soldier? Number one, because he needed firmness. He needed firmness. Firmness of hold. He needed a firm hold. Why? To prevent him from Slipping and sliding and falling. That's why he needed something that, you know, enabled him to stand firm. Right? And this is especially true in war. Now, let me give you an example. If you take athletics, you know, they would never get onto the track, you know, without the right kind of shoes. Because if they did not wear the right kind of shoes, you know, they can slip and slide and fall. And, you know, injure themselves. If it was important. Listen, if it would be important in athletics. You can imagine how important it will be. You know, in battle. Where you're fighting for your life. If shoes were important for sports. You won't get onto a football field without having, you know, boots that had studs under it. Because if you, if you get onto a football, you know, grassy field without studs, you're going to be slipping all over the place. Am I right about that? Huh? You'll be slipping all over the place. So, you know, every sport has its, you know, particular kind of shoes to help it handle every surface that they play on. And so we must understand that even in warfare, it's so important. And so there was, you know, such importance of footwear, my brothers and sisters. There was such an importance of footwear. And here's what they used for the Roman soldier, the footwear that they wore. Here's what they used. 
Listen. They used a thick soled sandal for their feet, all right? They used a thick sole sandal for their feet. And then, you know, straps that tied it in all directions so that it was, you know, tremendously tight, adhering to the feet. On the bottom of that thick sole, you know, where hobnails or studs, all right? On the bottom of that sole, attached to the bottom of that sole, where hobnails or studs, right? Now, what are these studs or these hobnails? They were little pieces of metal protruding from the bottom, right? Like a football shoe or a track shoe, right? And why was it given? So that it would give them grip on the soil. So that it would give them grip on the soil. This gave them firmness of footing, you know, to stand in the battle. And that's what the Apostle Paul sees. That's what he sees. Wait, because you must understand Paul was in jail. He was constantly tied between two Roman soldiers all the time. And every time he looked at the Roman soldier, he saw the different pieces of the armor. And every time he saw what he wore, he was reminded of the spiritual implications that it has for us. And when we understand, we will never take off the armor, not even a single second in the day. Once we put on the whole armor of God, every time we walk to work or we do, you know, prayer, whether we are praying or not, whatever we do, wherever we go, we will wear the armor of God 24-7. Because I'm telling you, no matter how much I teach on it, I cannot exhaust the subject. It is so vast in content. It is so vast in volume. The revelation of each piece of armor is so rich that you cannot exhaust its teachings. So they wore these metal spikes, you know, to give them a stand in the battle. So the Apostle Paul sees the Roman soldier, he sees them standing. And his feet are firm, my brothers and sisters. And he's able to hold his ground and keep his feet. He doesn't slip and he doesn't slide and he doesn't fall because he's got the right shoes on. My brothers and sisters, I came to tell you today that you must have the right shoes on. Listen, the Roman soldier wouldn't get out in the battle, right? With with, with just a normal leather shoe with a sleek bottom. Why? Because he would be slipping and sliding all over the place. And so they had to have a special shoe. Glory to God. I mean, think about this. The Roman soldiers knew that they had to have a special shoe. And it was very important. Why was it very important? Because in battle... Because in the battle, this would and this could save your life very possibly. If you were fighting an enemy on a rocky you know, surface and you had the wrong shoes and if you didn't have these hopnays, if you didn't have these you know, uh, protruding metal pieces, you could slide off that rock and the enemy can kill you with one you know, swipe of the sword and you would be a dead man. So the Roman soldiers understood very well that in order to protect themselves, the Roman soldier had to wear a boot, had to wear shoes with a heavy sole so that it couldn't be pierced. Because if your feet were pierced and you could not walk, may I say to you today, that would weaken the entire soldier. If you did not have a thick soul, then I tell you, the thorns could really get in and affect you very much. So they had to have, you know, this thick soul so that nothing could penetrate or pierce and injure their feet. Also, there's another thing. They had to have, you know, that kind of a shoe that lasts 
for long marches. You must understand the Roman soldiers, you know, they marched long distances to wage war. And so they had to have a, a particular sole or a type of shoe that would last those long marches. Why? Because they would cover tremendous amounts of terrain. Tremendous amounts of terrain they would cover. So we must make sure that we have or they had the right shoe. 